Welcome to City on a Hill Kids Church Online. I'm Lola. And I'm Jamie. We are still doing Psalm 23, but we're almost finished. Let's say what we've learned so far. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The next part will be added on after this time of worship. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. We're still in Psalm 23, but we're almost done. Let's say what we've done so far. Are you ready? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Before we add the next line to the psalm, let's remember who a shepherd was 
in the time that David wrote this psalm. A shepherd was someone who looked after absolutely everything that the flock required. Don't forget, the flock was made up of sheep and goats. But right now, I just want to say something about the sheep. This is going to help us understand this part of the psalm. If you remember, we said that sheep need to be taken care of. They don't do well at all on their own. When animals get lost, like let's say dogs or cats, they have a way of trying to find they, their way back to where they come from, like maybe finding their way back home, but not sheep. When a sheep gets lost, it will just stand there and bleat and bleat and bleat. It has no way of finding its way home. And, you know, the bleating sound is like inviting the wild animals to come and say, oh, here I am, here I am, come and eat me. That's exactly what it is. That's not all. If you put sheep out to pasture, that's to go and graze. And let's say you put it in a paddock that has grass and some poisonous weeds. The sheep will eat the lovely grass and the poisonous weeds also. They just eat anything that's put in front of them. And the thing is, the poisonous weeds could end up making the sheep very, very ill, or the sheep might even die. Also, another thing, you know, if you have sheep in a paddock, and let's say you've got another paddock that's got lovely green grass now, where the sheep is in the pad paddock, let's just say that the sheep eat up all the grass. They will continue to eat the grass until they get to the roots and they will eat the roots too. Do you know that the sheep won't know to go to the other paddock where there's green grass? They won't know to do that. They will just stand there and bleat and bleat and bleat because they're hungry. They can starve to death if they're not moved. So they need the shepherd to move them on to another paddock where there's green grass. So there are lots of things about sheep. Oh yes, there's one more thing. Sheep tend to wander. And if you get a wandering sheep, that particular sheep will just keep on wandering unless you do something to stop it from wandering. And what does the shepherd do? That's where this new line in Psalm 23 comes in. And that line is, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You remember what a rod looks like, don't you? Well, the rod has different uses. If you can remember when we did the first part of Psalm 21 we said some of the uses but I'll just say a few more here right now if the shepherd sees like a wild animal far off and the wild animal is coming to get one of the sheep the shepherd can throw that rod really far and strike that animal in such a way that the animal runs away gets hurt. But anyway, whatever the case is, the wild animal will leave the sheep alone. Another use of the rod is that the rod is used as a bar. And when the sheep pass underneath, they'll be counted. One, two, three. Another thing that the rod is used for is, remember, can you remember when I said that the shepherd looks over the sheep to make sure that the sheep is all right. It's not got any wounds or anything like that. Sometimes the rod is used to part the wool so that the shepherd could look deep inside to make sure that the sheep is all right and then lets it pass and then moves on to the next one.
Sometimes also the rod is used to give the sheep a good tap on the side when it's straying, going out with the flock. So there are lots of uses of the rod and even more than what I've said about the rod. And then we come to the staff. Remember what the staff looks like. It's like a question mark with a very long stem. And the hook part is called the crook. So the staff is almost like an extension of the arm of the shepherd. So when maybe lambs are moving away from the flock or sheep are moving from the flock, he uses the crook part of the rod to draw the lamb or the sheep back into the flock. Or let's say the sheep gets stuck between two rocks or it's really deep down in a, a ravine. The shepherd uses his staff to reach down and pull the sheep to, to safety. The other end of the staff, the straight end, is also used to tap the side of the sheep to guide them in the way that the shepherd wants the sheep to go. Now, if the shepherd doesn't do all this, remember what I said? They tend to wander. That's the sheep. They tend to wander and they can't find their way home. And then, of course, we said that they will bleat and bleat and bleat, inviting a wild animal to come and take them away. So the shepherd wants to keep the sheep safe. He has to use these things to keep the sheep within the flock. The shepherd loves his flock so much and he cares for them. The shepherd knows what would happen to the sheep if they wander off, if they get separated from the flock. And he wants to prevent that at all costs. He uses his rod and his staff to correct them. And the sheep actually do obey. Those that used to wander will stop wandering. And maybe some new ones will start wandering. But the important thing is that the sheep end up being corrected. Look at us. We are sheep in God's flock. And there are times that we wander just like real sheep do. God knows what would happen to us if we wander. As a matter of fact, it is dangerous. It is dangerous for us to wander away from God's protection. The rod is like the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit goes before us and makes things ahead of us safe. The Holy Spirit also helps us to think very deeply about things that we do and things that we say and things that we think, just like how the shepherd uses the rod to part the wool of the sheep and make sure that the sheep is all right. The Holy Spirit also helps us to understand what is written in the Bible. So that's the rod very important. And the staff, the staff is God pulling us back into the fold. He guides us safely back into the fold. And back into the fold is back into reading God's word. So God has lots of ways of correcting us. And some of the ways, it could be mild, <laughs> but some of them can be tough. God cares. He cares. He cares. He cares enough to correct us. I think that's a great thing to know about our God. Now, let's say the whole of Psalm 23 with the new line that we've added on today. Are you ready? 
Okay. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's it for this time. Next time, we're going to finish the rest of Psalm 23. Until then... Bye. Hi guys, nice to see you. Really good to be with you again today. So today we are doing the second part of Psalm 23 verse 4, all about the rod and the staff. Okay, are you ready? So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that we're holding like a quarter staff and we're going to go your rod and staff, they protect me. Okay, let's try that again. Your rod and staff, they protect me. So if we add that on to the rest of verse four, it goes like this. Even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid, Lord, for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff, they protect me. Well done. So now we're gonna do the whole thing that we've learned so far all together. So up on your feet, come on, let's get going. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in fields of green grass and he leads me to quiet pools of fresh water. He gives me new strength. He leads me on the right paths for his name's sake. Even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid, Lord, for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff, they protect me. Psalm 23 verses 1 to 4. Well done, give yourselves a clap. And next week is our final week and we're going to be adding verses 5 and 6 and then we'll know the whole thing. So keep practicing and I'll see you next week. Bye! Hi kids! How comforting is it to know that when we go astray, God is able to just put us back onto the right path. I thought we could make this week a little compass, which points us in the right direction and also lets us know when we're going in the wrong direction, kind of like God does. And so, how would you like to make one of these with me? even has a moving arrow and it says God will guide me just to remind me so to make this what we're going to need is some paper and pens scissors and glue and if you have them maybe one of these little split pins but don't worry if you don't have one because you'll be able to uh, stick the arrow to the compass using a little bit of string or something like that. So first of all, what you're gonna need to do is take your paper and draw a small circle in the middle with a bigger circle around it and then a huge circle around the rest of it. Split it into four and then into four again and that'll give you your directions. And then draw a big triangle pointing north, east, south and west. And then smaller triangles in between those four. Colour it in and draw your little carrier on the top. And then cut it out and colour in a little red arrow as well. Cut out the red arrow separately and then attach it to the middle of your compass. As I say, you can either use a split pin if you've got one of those. If you don't, then just make a hole through the 
arrow and through the compass and then tie a little bit of string through both those holes. Well, I really hope that you enjoy this really nice, simple craft this week and I'll see you again next time. Bye. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Lola, rod means the Holy Spirit. And Lola, the staff means God, guiding us to continue reading the Bible. So God is just like a shepherd with a staff. He corrects us. Let's say Psalm 23 with what we've added on today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Well done. That's Psalm 23 almost finished. Next time, we'll finish it. That's it for this week. Till next time. Bye! Bye.